apparently they didn't believe that there was a Mexican woman <laughs> waiting for him to, <laughs> to come back and take her to India. I started looking for a place because by January 15, I have to move. I will never say no to a long distance relationship, but it's a lot of work. And if both are not on the same page, it's very difficult. It's gonna bring you a lot of sadness and it's actually not worth it. Oh, hi everyone. I'm Lorena, this is Susan, this is my husband, and we are... Come on everybody, Kicholche, how is it going for you today? Welcome to the part number four of our love story, how we met. Yep, in this part of the story, I'm going to tell you from the time when he had to leave Mexico till the time we were reunited again here in India. We had a long distance relationship for nine months. You wanna know how it went? Go grab a snack and join us. So my husband left Mexico on uh, December 30th, uh, 2018, 18? yes. <laughs> um, because his project was finished, so he was sent back to India and I remember those days uh, being of course very sad, very gloomy my fairy tale was coming to an end probably <laughs> and I remember I went to leave them uh, at the airport he was not going alone, he went with two of our other friends and well it was a, a very sad one right like I'm letting go <laughs> the love of my life and God knows if he was going to keep the relationship. What if he decided I'm never gonna answer this woman anymore? <laughs> he could have stopped all the communication, or I don't know, many things could have happened. So I remember I went to, to drop him around 5 a.m. in the morning, something like that. And after that, I went to buy barbacoa. <laughs> If you go to Guadalajara and you are non-veg, there is a very good place uh, for barbacoa de Hidalgo. It's a type of a goat, mutton. It's very delicious. <laughs> and whenever my family, anyone in my family goes uh, on a flight, we make a stop. And depending if it's all of us, we all sit there and eat. And if not, we grab some and go to my parents' place and we eat this uh, barbacoa de borrego so I bought my share of barbacoa <laughs> and I invited my parents actually because New Year was coming so again we celebrated at my place this time without my love <laughs> I couldn't wish him a happy new year because I think he was mid-flight but well at least he communicated <laughs> when we when he came back and well, that made me feel a little bit better. The first days of January, I remember I started packing few things uh, because I have to leave the place where we were living. I could not afford it on my own, so I moved. And he left few things and I was like, oh my God, no. <laughs> uh, I started looking for a place because by January 15, I have to move. The places I was looking, they were not that bad, but not what I expected and of course nothing like I expected after having lived with my partner in a good place. Uh, at the end of the day, I lived with one of my friends. She offered me a room in her house and well, my life took a little bit more structure <laughs> after those days. I also remember my mom told Neil that she would help me to move and to settle me again nicely in a place, I mean, whatever I chose. By the way, I didn't go back to my parents' place because they don't have space. Her home is only for two people and that's fine. Uh, so yeah, I, I went with my friend. I had a good time, I must say. <laughs> Living with your friends is the best thing. And well, coming back to the relationship, um, I used to call him pretty much every day 
twice a <laughs> day. Um, because, you know, it is very difficult. I, I will never say no to a long distance relationship, but it's a lot of work. And if both are not on the same page, it's very difficult. It's gonna bring you a lot of sadness and it's actually not worth it if both are not on board. I just try to keep as much communication as possible because it's very easy to just decide not to answer or not to call and I didn't want that to happen so I was the one that used to call <laughs> and he answered which I also think it's fine um, I know him and I understood he was not gonna be the, the guy who was gonna call me every night or every day or something uh, so as far as he answered that was fine with me but <laughs> around um, April uh, he stopped answering me once a day and I was wondering what happened uh, because well I mean I understand he he's busy etc but if he had been doing it for two three months why to stop so I talked to him like what's happening because you are stopping <laughs> and then we realized the summertime in Mexico we have summertime was actually affecting this part of the communication so after talking we said ah that's fine I mean, we understand that this is gonna happen because of the time change so yeah <laughs> problem solved please before uh, starting imagining things in your head talk to your partner or and try to see the most of the possibilities about what something is not working that's gonna save you a lot of fights too oh i forgot to tell you another story around february it was a saturday morning so i was supposed to be just laying down on my bed doing nothing <laughs> uh, and then i received a call from him and i was like what Saturday morning are you mad well a bit <laughs> no he was not mad thing is that it was Friday night in India and he was uh, with his family with his father his sister my mother-in-law and he calls me and he tells uh, hey he this is my family I'm introducing you to my family <laughs> and I'm like excuse me on a Saturday morning, I was in pajamas, I was not dressed up, no, of course not even a little makeup, nothing. <laughs> and apparently, they didn't believe that there was a Mexican woman <laughs> waiting for him to, <laughs> to come back and take her to India. So I remember I talked with my father-in-law. My father-in-law asked me, like, if I was completely sure of marrying the guy, <laughs> I remember him going, are you sure you're marrying this guy? And I was like, yes, uh, and you are not going to leave him? And I was like, no, if he doesn't give me reasons, <laughs> it's a two-way <laughs> road. Are you sure? And are you fine coming to live here in India? And I said, yes, why not? I have a red which was not that much at, at the time. <laughs> Most of my experience was from being around other Indian people <laughs> in Mexico <laughs> and whatever I heard or read a bit on the internet. So that was one thing. Then he, I saw his mom, my mother-in-law, and she, she told me that I was very pretty uh, and that I looked like an Indian woman. <laughs> I remember she liked my smile. Till now she tells me that she likes my smile. And I don't remember if I spoke with my sister-in-law. <laughs> but well, they were having some drinks and a good time. So I think my husband was a little bit drunk and he decided to tell their parents that, yeah, I was 100% true <laughs> and that his intentions were to bring me here to India. So yeah, that's how it happened. And then, uh, same day, I remember I was uh, going to meet my parents and we were going to do some shopping together. So they picked me up and I called Neil, like, hey, you called me in the morning, now I'm calling you back <laughs> so you can meet my family. They chit-chat a little bit and yeah, 
that's the first uh, time my parents and his parents spoke <laughs> and I mean I was under the impression that everything was fine that they accepted me and they were okay with me going to live there in India and my family too my family was like okay <laughs> yeah this is happening I mean my family was uh, never in disagreement but they I mean I am that their daughter <laughs> and I am uh, running away with a, a foreigner of course they have some concerns but nothing like no you cannot go you are not gonna go God knows what's gonna happen there no nah, nah, nothing like that they were always supportive and they were always they they just always told me to be cautious because no one wants to see their children hurt because of love or something like that, right? <laughs> Going back to the timeline, um, in June, I applied for my uh, American visa, okay, for a transit visa, because long back, when I tried to go to Japan, I applied for a tourist visa with the only purpose to make a stop there and then go to Japan because it was cheaper blah 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 and they denied it to me so I was very afraid actually <laughs> of applying for my visa I was scared but well I had to do it because <laughs> also that was the cheapest flight to go to India I first applied for the Indian one which was very easy uh, and then I applied for the American visa because then at least I had the support like okay I'm I'm going there for the only purpose of crossing your border and board another flight to my final destination. My mom joined me that day. <laughs> I asked her, please come. Because last time when I applied and they denied it to me, I was feeling very sad and like... And I wish someone was there to, to console me. So this time I took my mom <laughs> with me. I remember also I came out of the of the building with with a huge smile that I tried to hide because I wanted to prank my mom but then I told like Mama you what I'm coming ah! <laughs> they asked me what was the purpose of my visit and then I straight said I'm going to India <laughs> and, then, and then oh sorry I mean I'm going to India through you through USA that's why I am applying for a C1 I mean they asked me what's the purpose of your visit in India and said I'm gonna get married <laughs> with my fiance the lady asked me how you met him I said at a party <laughs> which was everything truth <laughs> she asked me when was my flight and I told her uh, it's by 19 of September that was the, the plan so she told me ah oh, okay then your visa is coming in three four days oh okay yay <laughs> from that moment on I start packing everything <laughs> as much as I could I, I remember my room at my friend's place being a complete mess <laughs> uh, trying to to discard things or to donate other things so I, I threw a lot of clothes I remember uh, a lot of papers <laughs> and yeah for June, July, September, for almost two months, my my suitcases were pretty much packed, <laughs> just waiting for me to go to the airport and leave for India. So in Mexico, uh, scholar year starts in August and finishes in June. So you have more or less a month of vacation if you are a student, if you are a teacher, probably only one top two weeks of vacation. So the time comes and I have to talk with my boss. Um, it was a very uncomfortable moment. I mean, I know quitting a job is uncomfortable, but I just joined the, this job on December and I was leaving by August <laughs> or September. I really liked that one. It was a very good opportunity for me as a Chinese teacher. And I was also going to a bit of a management level. Uh, but well, things happened and I talked to him. I, I remember I thanked all the crew, which was very little, but also we were very good uh, co-workers, I must say. 
and I told him, uh, guess what? I have good news and bad news. <laughs> so the bad news were that, of course, I am leaving. I'm getting married. Ah! And I wish you could come, but I just got a ticket for going India and not coming back, so it's not gonna work. The good news were that I had someone in mind that could fill in my position. So I was just not throwing the job like that. I am an enemy of being that kind of, of person because whatever the circumstance uh, is in your, in your work, you should live on a good note, unless, unless they are very bad people <laughs> with you, they mistreat you or they don't appreciate you the way they should, then it's okay. But if not, you better leave everything in a good note. I, I did some extra buys. If you want to buy souvenirs from Mexico, you go to this market, which is called San Juan de Dios. Hi, everybody. Hola. <laughs> uh, these people actually know me because when I was in my teenage years, I used to sell food in that market. So I went to this market and I bought some presents for my in-laws because in India, it's a custom to bring a presents wherever you go <laughs> so I remember like I was I was thinking what should I bring and I asked my husband what uh, should I bring because I was clueless <laughs> and probably his family was expecting something from the foreigner <laughs> and he told me no no don't bring anything there's no need he actually didn't take anything for his family when he left in December but I insisted so what I did was I bought some Mexican typical sweets and two for my sisters-in-law and my mother-in-law I bought a small purse and then I moved with my family back I moved from 15 to 25 actually we moved the um, the flight we had to move it and during those days I went to Cancun I saw my grandma for one last time before she passed she passed last year only uh, so I was also very happy that I could see her once I left Mexico um, those days were very good I must say um, I mean being with your family knowing that you are not going to to see them, to be with them in a long time, it's, I mean, those times make them, make being with them very precious. And well, on September 25th of 2019, I took my suitcases and flew to Kolkata. <laughs> I suffer anxiety attacks uh, very rarely, I must say, but when, I, when those happen to me, I get severe headache, migraines, uh, my stomach is upset, I feel like I'm gonna faint, and I was just feeling that minutes before boarding from US to Qatar. <laughs> Oh my god, no! I was feeling like, no, 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 I'm gonna miss my flight or something, but it's gonna happen. Ah! Thank god nothing of that happened. I bought some chocolate, which I think I shouldn't have because chocolate also increases headache, but anyway. And well, the rest was that I enjoyed my flight. Um, first was from Mexico to Los Angeles, it was like two hours. I had to wait a lot there was not that nice then from there to Qatar and from Qatar to Kolkata so I was just waiting in immigration and well the questions came I said I'm visiting my my friends I'm gonna meet his family as well I'm gonna stay with them and that's it they said okay good they stamped me and let me go and when I was going out of the airport, I thought they were going to stop me. Uh, but no, the officer just said, oh, goodbye. <laughs> I was like, okay. I think they probably thought I was also Indian. I mean, you can see I'm not a blonde chick. <laughs> and 
then when the doors of the airport open and the humid heat <laughs> oh my god I'm in Kolkata <laughs> and my eyes were just all over the place looking for me I was like is he here he told me <laughs> he was here he must be here why not <laughs> and then I see him on the on the left side I remember him with his tracks and one of his shirts and of course I felt a huge relief and a huge excitement like oh my god he came he's actually here picking me up <laughs> because in my mind of course I was already making a plan to <laughs> to go somewhere and stay the night because if he didn't show up what would I have done <laughs> so but no nothing of that happened he picked me up and you can see my smile now it was the sad same smile <laughs> he took one of my suitcases i have two big ones and uh, and when i see his car it's this uh purplish hue and i have always wanted a purple car so i say yes <laughs> this is why i came here this is why i'm in the right place <laughs> because now i'm also getting a purplish car <laughs> And that night was the first night I spent in Kolkata roaming around because we decided to drive around Kolkata to see the city just like that. <laughs> we came back to the hotel around 4 probably 4 or 5. It was down already and then we just slept and got ready to see our apartment. Ah! <laughs> And well guys, I'm gonna leave it here because I can hear sun awakening. So if you want to see how was my first day in Kolkata, I am going to leave a card here. In this video, I tell you how was my first day. And well, thank you for watching. I hope you really enjoyed it. And please don't forget that by subscribing and sharing this video, you are helping our channel very much. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And of course, follow us on Instagram at one in the Mexican Pub. Ta-ta!